Hi guys, Black Box here. In uh, this video I'll be talking about the landing technique of the Airbus A320. In order to reproduce a good landing, it is uh, very important that the approach is flown as stable as possible. This is achieved in part by using certain pitch and power values. Now, needless to say, these vary with the gross weight of the aircraft and the weather conditions. Now, once you've uh, established final configuration and at target speed, you check the N1 values One and value. also the pitch value. So once you have to deviate from those basic values, say because you have to uh, correct the airspeed or you have to correct the glide path, you then strictly return to those basic values. Another important factor is the instrument scan. So make sure that you only scan the important parameters like pitch, vertical speed, airspeed, thrust setting. And don't get stuck on watching just one of these parameters. So if you have a good instrument scan, you will see deviations from the optimum flight path and airspeed very quickly. Because the larger deviations become, the more difficult they are to recover. Another important factor is the outside scan. Once you get closer to the runway, the frequency of the instrument scan will get less and the frequency of the outside scan will increase. This will get to a point where just before touchdown um, there will be no more instrument 200. scan only an outside Minimum. scan which will help to achieve a good touchdown. Now during the most part of the approach 100. you will have a visual fixation on the touchdown zone 50, of the runway. 40, 30, now at about 100 feet 20, above ground 10, the visual 5. fixation point will change to the end part of the runway. This makes it easier to see the approximate rate towards the runway. Let me just demonstrate you this with uh, two approaches. Now in this approach, just keep your eyes Minimum. in the center of the highlighted circle. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. And now again, concentrate on the center Minimum. of the highlighted circle. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Retard. 10. 5. Now I hope that you could see that on the second approach, you could see the approximate rate, i.e. the approach rate towards the runway, a lot easier. Okay, let's go back to the start of the approach. We have uh, selected the final configuration, are at target speed, and are now using the flight path vector to help us um, stabilize the approach. As a rule of thumb, you can say that on a 3 degree glide path, the vertical speed is about half of the ground speed. Now at the moment we have a ground speed of 133 knots. So the vertical speed should be around 650 to 700 feet per minute. If the ground speed was 160 knots, 1, your descent rate should be around 800 feet per minute. And as another example, if your ground speed is 200 knots, your descent rate should be around 1000 feet a minute to maintain the 3 degree glide path. To correct deviations from the vertical path, you should try to use only small changes in vertical speed. That is of course only valid if you have seen the deviation early enough and the deviations haven't become too great. Now, deviations from the target airspeed should be recovered by using thrust changes of a maximum 500. of plus 10, minus 10%. 10 
So if your target power was, for example, 50% N1, Four. you should remain between 40 to 60% N1 in order to recover any speed deviation. In other words, try to avoid big changes from target above. power and target pitch when trying to recover deviations. Now I have to uh, talk about the system behavior of the fly-by-wire system when passing 50 feet radial altimeter. At that point, the trimmable horizontal stabilizer is frozen and the normal flight mode changes to flare mode. Now, the flare mode is essentially a direct stick to elevator relationship with some dampening provided by the load factor and the pitch rate feedbacks. This simply means that the system memorizes the aircraft's attitude at 50 feet and it becomes the initial reference for pitch attitude control. As the aircraft descends further through 30 feet, the system begins to reduce the pitch attitude to minus 2 degree down over a period of 8 seconds. Now, I know this sounds very complicated, however, it is just simply there to produce a flare simulation for the pilot. Now, because the system reduces the pitch attitude slowly to minus 2 degrees down over at least 8 seconds, the pilot has to use back pressure, i.e. nose up command and side stick, to flare the aircraft. Next, we'll talk about how to deal with a crosswind situation. In this example, we have about 15 knots crosswind from the left. Now, obviously, any deviation from the localizer or the runway centerline will be corrected by using the ailerons only. The rudder is only used later on during the flare phase to decrab the aircraft. During the decrab phase, the aircraft's longitudinal axis is aligned with the runway centerline. And also here, the smoother the rudder is used, the more stable the whole procedure will be. Be aware that the decrab should not be done before the flare phase of the aircraft. So first we reduce the descent rate and then we carefully use the rudder to align the aircraft's longitudinal axis with the runway center line. Now, just to give you an idea of the wind correction angle, at the maximum crosswind of 38 knots, the wind correction angle is about 13 degrees. Above. So as you can see here, with 15 knots crosswind, we have about six to seven degrees of wind correction angle. 200. Minimum it is also important to touch down with both main wheels at the same time. This is to help the 100. spoiler logic activate all of the spoilers. In order to achieve this, you will probably have 50. to use some side stick 40. aileron input 30. to keep the wings level. Also then very important drive. is the fact that if you have strong crosswinds, you should aim for a solid touchdown. Uh, do not flare for long time because then the aircraft will start to drift off the center line of the runway. And after touchdown, make sure to lower the nose gear as uh, quickly as you can. This will help you maintain directional control. Okay, so this covers the subject landing technique for now. Hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, uh, please be so kind, leave a like, thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one.